Just a warning, this video is a little mathy, but we need to establish the derivation of quantum momentum. So recall we define the expectation value of position uh, like this, um, but the expectation value of position need not be a constant in time, since in particular psi of x and t is also not necessarily constant in time. In particular, uh, you can imagine a plot of wave function versus position, that is, at different times, where the expectation value is at one point at one earlier time and at a different point at a later point in time. Again, that horizontal axis there is position, not time. So what about then the expectation value of velocity? Uh, and so what do we mean by velocity? of a particle, a quantum particle? Well, we mean the partial derivative with respect to time of the expectation value of position. It turns out it's more common in quantum mechanics to work with momentum. And so instead, we're going to work with the expectation value of momentum, which is mass times the derivative with respect to time of the expectation value of position. All right, so let's use the expectation value of position and write this out. So we have m d by dt of this integral, psi star times x times psi, integral dx. So the derivative hits the time dependence in the psi's only. Of course, the x doesn't have any time dependence. And so then we get two terms distributing the time derivative in. One where the der time derivative hits psi star. That's still multiplied by x and psi. And then another one where it hits psi which is multiplied by psi star in x. And we're still integrating over x. So uh, what do we do with this derivative with respect to psi star uh, with respect to time? And also the derivative of psi. What are we going to do with these time derivatives? Well, we can simplify them, um, or get rid of them, rather, using the Schrodinger's equation. So recall Schrodinger's equation involves a time derivative of psi and that's equal to a second space derivative of psi plus v of x times psi. Uh, let's just solve for the time derivative of psi with respect to time. Uh, and so we get minus h bar over 2mi d squared dx squared of psi plus v over i h bar psi. And we're going to use this to replace our d psi dt in the integral above. Of course, we also have a d psi star dt. So what are we going to do about the d psi star dt? Well, we could just take the complex conjugate of the expression that we just wrote. And taking the complex conjugate on both sides, everywhere we see an i, we write minus i. And everywhere we see a psi, we write psi star. And so that should be a psi star there, psi star. Uh, we did assume here that the potential v is actually real, so that v star is equal to v. Okay, so now we're going to use these to replace in the integral expression that we had above for the expectation value of the momentum. So taking this and plugging it in here, and then taking this expression and plugging it in here, we get, uh, well, we get a mess. Okay, but after some of the dust clears, we find m, the integral, there's still an x out front here. Uh, I get psi, h bar over 2mi, second derivative of psi star, minus, then the same thing, I just switch psi and psi star, integral of that dx. By the way, uh, the terms involving v of x, the potential, will cancel. And you should check that to make sure that you can see that those are going to cancel. Okay, let's just simplify this by pulling out some common factors. The m's are going to cancel, by the way. Uh, and so then I get psi, second derivative of psi star, minus psi star, second derivative of psi, integral dx. It's kind of ugly. Uh, but we can simplify this by using some integration by parts. 
which I'm sure was the first thing you thought of when you looked at this ugly expression. But okay, that's what we're going to do. It's going to be a helpful little trick. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to try and get these terms, these two terms inside of the integral, to look like each other by using integration by parts. Let me label these two terms A and B for simplicity. So let's first focus on term A. So rewriting that, it looks like x psi second derivative with respect to x of psi star dx. Integrating by parts, I get x psi d by dx of psi star evaluated between negative infinity and infinity minus the integral of, well, the x derivative of x psi times the x derivative of psi star dx. That's how integration by parts works. This boundary term is going to disappear. Um, and it's going to disappear because we're going to assume the wave function disappears or goes to zero as x goes to plus or minus infinity. Uh, that's going to be a fundamental assumption for us. Writing out the derivative in that uh, term inside of the integral, I get two terms when I distribute that derivative through. And they look something like this, and that's an integral over dx. Uh, believe it or not, that's simplified. Uh, okay, so now let's focus on term B. And term B, we're going to do something similar. So again, term B was x psi star, second derivative of x of psi dx. So we're going to do the same stuff. Uh, I'm just not going to write all of the details, but you're going to get something where, again, you're just doing, going to exchange psi and psi star in the expression that we had above. Uh, which isn't terribly surprising, because that's all that we're doing in B. Okay, so we get the same thing, we just switched psi and psi star. And now we're going to put these expressions back into the expression we had for the expectation value of momentum for terms A and B. So that means the expectation value of momentum comes with this prefactor, h bar over 2i. We've got the integral, and then we've got term A. which is this, and then we have term B, keeping track of my minus signs here. All right, integral dx. Hey, look, these two terms cancel. So this simplifies down to something that looks a little bit better. Psi star, x derivative of psi, minus uh, psi, x derivative of psi star dx. But this still doesn't look like uh, a simplified form. Maybe we could do another integration by parts. Again, that's sur surely the first thing you thought of. Uh, let's move the d by dx on the second term onto psi to make it look like the first term. OK, so doing that, we have just rewriting my first term, psi star x derivative of psi, minus, and so here's the boundary term and then the integral term that I get from integration by parts. So d by dx of psi times psi star dx. Again, this boundary term is going to go to 0. And now, hey, look, those two integrals look the same. In fact, they are the same. So I get a factor of 2, which cancels the 1 half. So I just get this. Uh, it's conventional to move the h bar over i inside so that I get something that looks like psi star h bar over i d by dx times psi dx. And this is usually what we then call the momentum operator. p hat is h bar over i d by dx. And so this is where the momentum operator came from uh, in our earlier discussions.